This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Cross start your eyes. So our next guest, man, I consider him an enigma because you can't really put him in one category, which is great. He's a music lover. He's a man that comes from a rock world, a man who uh, could exist in the EDM world, a man who could exist in the hip hop world, a man who could exist in the world that he created on his own. The one and only Skrillex is here, ladies and gentlemen. Skrillex is here. Thank you. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good, man. I can't. I'm in a good mood today. I'm in a great mood today. You too? I can't believe I just walked into seeing us, you know, you guys playing main yeah. chorus crew over here. Yeah, Such right. Such a surprise. Shout yeah. out. You guys killed it. Yeah. So clap sample. Yeah, 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 Who's sitting yeah, yeah. the clap samples? You? No, that's really a big crowd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they they come in handy. Yo, you're a West Coast kid, right? Born and raised. Born and raised. You know I'm West Coast, man. You? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, you were yeah, in yeah, uh, um, KML. Uh, yeah, KML. So I grew up in the Bay Area. I lived there for 10 years. For 10 years, right? Yeah. See how do you see the parallels here? Yeah. Yeah, me, me and Skrillex are not even talking yet, Sway. Skrill, what? You want to tell on yourself? You want to tell what happened when you first came what in? What came I got excited and actually I touched your butt. Ow! <laughs> we we just was, met! <laughs> me next! Tracy, yeah. Yeah, Tracy. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> so we, yeah, we saw, I see the parallel, but did he feel your butt, Sway? Nah, no, man. Oh, we sorry. Know, but we hugged up, man. Oh, okay. It's not no, like that between yeah, me and Sway. I'm just letting yeah, you know. It's different. different vibe, yeah. different okay. vibe, man. Sorry. We, I, I appreciate him on a more on a musical le level, level had to be. Got you know, it. Skrillex and I will bump into each other like on red carpets and, you know, these real strange worlds that we exist in, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, I remember the first time I saw you on a red carpet, the Grammys red carpet. And I was like, oh, I'm really happy for this kid because uh, what I get from you just as a person is uh, you're, you're a guy who's adventurous, you know, um, and you seem like you don't want to be defined by one thing. And so I think that's a uh, reflects in the music that you do. Um, and that's hard to do in this business. Right. You know, I think it's harder, like for some people to get scared to just try new things. I think like even if you try something and you fail and it's and it's not that great it's better than trying than not trying at all you know so. yeah yeah and that, yeah. that's that's i feel like that when i listen uh when you when you study your history and, and see you know from going from a band and becoming a solo artist and and that sounds nothing like the band you know what i mean yeah. and uh and and then diving in all these genres successfully that's kind of that's that's the vibe i got from you that's what attracts me to mm -hmm. him, Heather. Mm -hmm. Not not him touching my butt. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make sure your ball did. Okay, right. Okay, so <laughs> Skrillex is here, man. Um, um, we're gonna talk with Skrillex. I know you got a lot of great things coming up. I want to talk about the tour. I want to talk about some new music. Uh, but first, man, I, we thought it'd be fitting, man, since you're here. Uh, we wanted to put together something special. A special medley of some of the music you've made throughout your career. Mm. And then we're going to open up the phone lines, 888-742-3345. Sway Those the are like the most turned up Skrillex tracks you ever. Like, I right. hope you guys in the morning are feeling it now. Yeah, you feeling Woo! that? You with us? You with us? I like that. DJ Wonder, congrats. Man, DJ Wonder put that medley together, man. Skrillex has joined us. There's some ones I haven't heard for a long time. Yeah. Would you hear those songs, like, do, do, do they take you back to those moments? Like, yeah. In those moments? The early the, ones. Uh, all the, yeah, a lot of those early ones. Yeah? Yeah. I remember when we were in New York and uh, Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites first came out. And it was, like, on Beatport and it was charting. Uh-huh. And, um... It was just like a really surreal moment to like finally have like a record out because like I was giving free music away to Skrillex like for like two years. Yeah. Like was like creating this fan base and just giving free music, DJing random shows, booking my own shows, you know, going to Mexico, and, like DJing in like sketchy places on the weekends in Mexico, <laughs> just driving out with my friends. <laughs> and yeah, that, that record reminds me of New York City. That reminds you of New York City? Yeah. Wow. What's the first time you came to New York? What was that like? That was, that was my world. band from first to last. Okay, from, from first to last. I was 16. Right? Yeah. And I played at this at CBGB's, my first show ever in New York. Oh. Damn, you called CBGB. Open. Yeah, before it was closed. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Yeah, it was like crazy in there. Everyone there that worked there was so mean and bitter. <laughs> I Why? remember asking for like a, a water at the bar, and they're just like, gave me a weird look. Yeah. I think it was because I had. <laughs> Could you ask for had water? Hair. Yeah. No, wow. but I, play, I played CBGB's. I was playing the Continental Club. Remember that place? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. St. Mark's. That's closed too now. Yeah. St. Mark's, wow. Yeah. That's the Lower East Side, uh -huh. LES. It's different now over there. It is. It was super punk rock. You know that, that one store, Trash and Vaudeville, used to go mm. shopping there. Yeah. Oh, that's Jimmy. still there. Jimmy, shout out to Jimmy. I think he's still, I'm sure he's still there. Yeah. In there forever. Yeah. St. Yeah. Mark's is where I got my first tattoo. Where is it? 
over here, Carpe Diem. Nice. When I was in Seize college, now it's like taken over by all the college day. kids. So it's different. Yeah. Um, what what made you decide uh, to to just pursue the solo thing from? Because uh, you guys had a lot of success. I feel like you guys are a credible band. What made you decide to go solo? You know, I don't know. It was just the right time. Actually, a big part of it was we put out two records on Epitaph, uh-huh. and then we signed this major deal with Capital, and then all of a sudden. Capitals merging with EMI and like we lost our A&R it was like one of those crazy situations and like in that point like we were kind of in limbo and I, I just wanted to do some other things I've always like been making beats on a computer since I was like 14 and even did some like some beats for from first to last and some remixes too so yeah I was just it felt like the right time just to make my own music and, and I felt like the computer is the best way I could express myself at the time yeah, you you are a vanguard, in, in my opinion, in, in for the, the digital age, utilizing social media platforms to get your name out, to get your brand out, mm-hmm. and become who you are today. When Sway, you and I were talking while the music was playing, and Sway just said something very interesting about where you were and your first time to New York, but you seemed so young, and then I read you in private school. Did your parents, were they supportive? Because you just seemed young, jumping all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my parents were supportive. Um, my dad was really supportive and just kind of like, you know, I, I I did this band when I was 16, you know, and, and um, dude, growing up, I, you know, I had, like, so many different experiences, like, playing music, and, you know, ever since I was nine, I was playing piano and guitar and played in local bands and just, like, kept doing it and always kind of did it, so it just felt like a natural thing that happened. Was well, that, 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 like, infringement on the child slavery laws if you're playing at nine years <laughs> old? <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't touring at nine years old. I was, sometimes I was, like, playing music. Oh, you just oh, playing okay. music? Okay. I, was, I was a little concerned. No, 16 is when I first started put my first record out. Uh-huh. It's like it was 2004. It was 10 years ago. Wow. I put my, put my first record well, did, out. Do you remember the first time you heard someone else play your record? The first time I ever, it was when I actually, from first to last, we had a rec, we had um, a song on Fuse that made like the top video of the week or whatever, like yeah. fan vote. Mm-hmm. And um, that was the first time like like seeing like and hearing anything it was like really surreal did you scream because you know I, I didn't scream you didn't scream okay <laughs> heather, i'm gonna ask you that because heather you know legendary heather b uh i'm the first time i heard somebody play a swaying tech record guy by the name of kevy Cab, who worked at kzsu stanford the college station wow has a show called the drum and we were on the, like 880 driving in a Scirocco old car and he played our record man we damn near wrecked <laughs> you know it's nothing like you know when you people gravitate towards something you are passionate about and, and work towards you know what the first time you heard had your record heard a record play um i i think i was just jumping up and down so much that i missed the record like yeah. i didn't hear it I, I, yeah. it was playing it was like background music because i was so excited and that's why i asked you like when you hear your music wonder did this mix for you where were you and you and so he even told me that he did a lot of writing in his car he was uploading shit like yeah. in his car like knocking it playing the guitar so it's crazy to me where he found his inspiration to do a lot of his earlier joints and yeah. I'm, I'm wondering um since you found your talent at such an early age how did like your classmates and your friends react was anyone jealous because i remember reading that you were bullied when you were younger um and correct me if i'm wrong um from reading that but i'm thinking to myself maybe people are just envious yeah i mean you know what i i, I never try to pay attention to that so much i'm, I'm surrounded by so many great people and like the same crew like the fundamental crew that I've had in my old band, like yeah. I still have now, like ten years later. Oh, wow. Like my manager, my old te- he was my old tour manager. He, he's actually just a video guy, just like like recording stupid shit on video <laughs> while we were with from first to last. And now he's like my day to day guy after ten years. He's actually mm-hmm. outside listening right now. Oh, um, that's great. But yeah, it's dope. I can I say some one thing real quick? Absolutely. So I was talking to Wes today, um, you know, about Diplo about coming in here. Yeah. And he and he sent me the link to the Riff Raff freestyle here. Oh yeah. <laughs> when, when, can we just talk about how amazing that was? <laughs> it was incredible. Right. When did it happen? <laughs> that happened over about a year about a year or so ago and uh two almost two, two years. Two years ago, yeah. And Riff you were Raff. losing your mind. <laughs> <laughs> you were losing it. I love that. Really thing. It was hysterical. He just sat there. The whole, you saw it, right? It was didn't care. Didn't care, and he was didn't just like it. leaning back, and I was just surprised. He was like green pancakes, and he is literally one of the best freestyle. He can go forever. I've seen him like if you just let him go, he won't stop, and it never, it never like once you think you've heard it all. <laughs> well, that's what, and that was my first you know? time ever meeting him, so that's why I lost. Well, it. you know, yeah. people <laughs> did, did, didn't take Riff Raff seriously, and then when he came in here, we was just we people walk in here, we have no judgment, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. and if yeah. I ask you, look, man, I'll be honest with Skrillex, I I've had like 
I won't say names, but A-list rappers come in here who, who are scared to do exactly what he did. Right. Totally. You know what I mean? How we were talking about people are scared to experiment with sounds. Yeah, and yeah. It's better to try and have failed and never have tried at all. Mm. And then, uh, so he came in, man. And man, matter of fact, man, let's dig that up. Yes. Let's play this, all right? And it's Skrillex is here. If you want to talk with him. remix this. All right, you should. <laughs> you should. 888 742 3345. It's Riff Raff, freestyling. Oh, Yo, that was Riff Raff. That was August 2012, man. People still talk about that freestyle to this day. Skrillex has joined us. He got the album Recess. On on this um on this project, you I like when you obviously I might be a little biased. Uh I like what what you do in general, but I find it interesting when you um, team up with rappers um, and because you, you've yet to miss with that combination. And you got Chance the Rapper on this project. How how did you discover Chance the Rapper? Man, I met him like a few years ago in LA just through a friend. Actually, my uh, my publicist who's who was friends and who's up on him like, you know, when um, like when he was first putting out videos and mm -hmm. stuff and and like we became friends. Chance used to actually sleep on my couch, and like him and his manager, like when they, when, when they come to LA, they always stay with us, and we just became good friends. And I was in Seattle um, and while he was in Seattle as well. And after a show, we just went back to the studio, had a bunch of friends come over, and it was like probably like twenty people in the studio. Yeah. And like we just did that record there, you know. And I had this like little melody idea and like some like break beats, mm -hmm. and then um, we ended up like recording like his whole band with live horns and, and keyboards and all that stuff. And just a really fun record. Just, yeah. Yeah. He, he's, um, an interesting guy. I mean, he's been up here before. Mm -hmm. It's a very, I've had him on rap fix on MTV. Very honest about who he is. Yeah. You know, uh, what he does, uh, was sound set. He performed yeah. sound set. And he's young and he yeah. has such a powerful message right now to people. Like he's, he's one of the most like compelling artists I've ever seen. Ever. Like, especially if you've seen him play live, he's yeah. just like, you know, it's that, that real like hysteria in the audience. You, yeah. know, you see when like Justin Bieber comes out, it's like that. You it's know? that but feeling, right? It's that amazing feeling, you know? Yeah. Um, Did y'all instantly connect? Like, uh, you, you said you came up with melodies. Did he start humming, you know, rap melodies? Out yeah, well, it started with, he started singing, you know, like we want to do something melodic. Yeah. You know, it's the song's a little bit more melodic than like, you know some of his other stuff but he goes there mo you know yeah. like especially in his live show like he goes into these like long jazz breakdowns and just starts like singing and um but it was like i had like the just the melody like on the keyboard and the synth and like some drum loops yeah. and then like we started stacking horns and and all yeah. these live instruments and and percussion and gang vocals and we had like you know all like the mics were like we record all this random stuff from like the party at the mm -hmm. at the studio yeah. and it just yeah. has this real like like soul. That's what Let's the go. coast is clear is all about. Yeah, exactly. Okay, the coast Let's is go. clear. Let's go. What's your secret? What's your interest? Uh, who you swaying with in the in the morning? With all my homies. How you doing, girls? Y'all looking good. Oh, screw Yeah, baby. Serenaded Tracy G and Heather B. Hey. All in one line. That's that West Coast right there, Heather. Be careful. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm That's listening. all I gotta do, though. I can't, I can't, uh, you know, live up the riff raff, though. No, no, no. <laughs> I can't go any further. Uh, really like that song, man. Uh, the album is Recess. Uh, you, uh, you about to? You set to do another tour, right? Yeah, we're doing another tour this fall. I'm kind of always on tour, but this is like a kind of a cool, special leg of the tour where we have like different artists coming out. Yeah. And um, yeah. I wish I had the list. I don't have it with me, but it's cool. Oh, well, we have Oh, my gosh. Oh, get the list of artists. Hold up. Hold on. Let me get you the list of artists, man, so you'll be all right here. We got Tracy, that, too. Tracy, you got too. that, too, man. What do you need? I got that, too. We got a lot of fun people. We got guys like we got DJ Snake. We got Ferg. We got Big Gigantic, DJ Mustard, and many others for support. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, how, what is... Uh, how you Ausla? Well, Ausla. What does that? What does that stand for? Yeah, it's, it doesn't stand for anything. It's not an acronym. It's just a word. It's from uh, this book called Watership Down, and it's about rabbits. Uh huh. It's by Richard Adams, and the Ausla is the rabbit army in the book. Okay. And um, it's a really dope book. You get a chance to uh, read it. Okay, and that's and so you named your 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 label that. Yeah. Okay, so do you see you guys are as an army of rabbits? Bunch of art, rabbit armies, man. <laughs> <laughs> Scouring the lands for food. Rocking yeah. out? Yeah, Whoa. you're reading your own bio. That's funny. <laughs> no, I'm looking. I'm looking. You know who's awesome? I wish yeah. we had. Have you heard of Vendata? I'm just reading on here. Okay, yeah. There's new artists from Los Angeles that are amazing. They're two producers, uh -huh. duo. And um, 
Yeah, man. There's a lot of dope stuff. K Tronada, you guys up on them yet? Not up on those. K Tronada's new. He just got, I think he just got signed to XL as well. I am up on them. Oh, you hold on. Oh, catch on now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My bad, my bad. Wonder, I got so many things in my head. Wonder has to remind me what I know. We play this stuff all the time. All the time, man. yeah, my bad, my bad. I do know catch on now, though. Yeah. Um, anyway, and- we're going on tour this fall. It's going to be so much fun. Okay. Yippee. All right, we got uh, Andre on the line from Col- Colorado. Dre, what up, man? Yeah, I just want to say uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I wanted to congratulate Skrillex on his success. And I don't want to talk too much or whatever, but uh, I've been promoting you to my black friends because, I don't know, for some reason they don't be feeling some of your music, but I think your shit is on point. And secondly, all right, so the guys from YouTube who do the epic rap battles, they had you on there as on doing a... It was, it was you versus Mozart. Yeah, yeah. You think in real life you can kill Mozart. What? Did, what is it? What did you say? <laughs> in, in real life, could you defeat Mozart? I don't know. I think it would be. I think we'd probably end up collaborating together, to be honest, rather than killing each other. He's pretty dope. I don't want to kill him, but yeah, yeah. You've listened to a lot of uh, classical uh, uh, composers. Yeah, enough. I mean, I, I I know like I mean I'm not like deep into classical music. It's uh-huh. not something like I'm. I couldn't you know talk about it in an intellectual way. Yeah. But I I love classical. I mean, it's something you can just sort of turn on and like you know take it in like classical radio and XM or whatever. Hmm. Um, do we have that station? You? I, I just make Maybe that up. But, to, yeah, <laughs> no, you know, I, think we, about. I think we have that station. I know, I know it helps plants glow, grow. Yeah, if yeah. you're trying to have a garden, you play in classical music. It also calms babies down. Calms mm-hmm. babies. Yeah, yeah. And then um, uh, real guys, like real cycles, too, kind of gravitate towards that, too. So it, it reaches oh. a whole wide range of <laughs> audience. Go ahead, Heather. I have a, a black people question, I guess, it's based on the caller. You go going on tour, right? You, yeah. And um, I'm just saying, all of this. I'm not trying to get in your pocket, but all of these dates, all this touring, all this money. What's the craziest thing you ever bought? I don't really buy. I actually, I I bought a building in Chinatown in in L. A. last year, and I'm building all these studios. I don't know if it's that crazy, but it's just like it was an exciting thing for me because you know with my own label now yeah. we have like a office in a space in L. A. And, and Chinatown's such a new developing area, and I come from the east side, mm-hmm. you know, of Los Angeles, and just, like, building downtown, and um, that's pretty exciting. So we're building studios, like, good mix studios, studios that are, are really catered to, like, the in-the-box, in the like, computer producers. Right. Because wow. all these, like, a lot of these old studios have so much old analog gear that, like, we're not using, and, uh-huh. and now, like, there's never been a studio in the east side of town where... It revolves around the culture and that of that area because there's so much in LA happening right now. Yeah, like obviously, like you know, we have main course in here in the building right now. We just tore it up with that set earlier. Mm-hmm. With, like Alsa Records, mm-hmm. Mad Decent, yeah, Body High, Smog Records. There's all these like crews that are all happening more or less in like the East Side. Yeah, and so we're trying to like build the industry out there. That's dope. And so I got we got this building, and we're about to break ground and get these studios going. So they should be done in like eight months. You know, nice. so I'm excited about that. Let me ask you this, because a lot of I come from a uh, place of analog studios. You yeah. Know, back in the day, when you had the two inch reels, two and, inches, you know, yeah. and, uh, the track boards and everything. And uh, uh, do you ever get backlash from some of the old school musicians who say, uh, you know, computer producers are taking jobs away from those who work in studios? And yeah. I've never heard that because, I mean, you know, I feel like, you know, especially in the beginning, you know, a lot of people didn't take you know, computer production seriously anyway. Yeah. But I don't I don't think that because I think like, you know, electronic music, you know, even in rock music, people are using electronics. Like in all rock records, mm-hmm. all the drums are triggered, you know, and yeah. like they're oh, using wow. auto tune and they're using like the computer to, to create music. So, you know, it's like you can limit yourself for whatever reason, for whatever fundamental reason, or you can just take it all the way. And that's what I just ended up doing because that's all I really had. So mm-hmm. I maximized like mm-hmm that limitation of only having a computer and just being by myself, so. Yeah, you've taken it far. You've taken <laughs> it real to. far. You know, Wonder's uh, a big fan of yours as well, and Wonder DJs and producers, and I know he has some real intricate de- uh, producer questions, so, so he could bite your style. Go ahead, Wonder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, a lot of our listeners, the aspiring rap artists, a lot of aspiring producers as well. Like, what did you start working on uh, program-wise? When you're making beats and what like what have you gone on to now? When I was 15, I got Fruity Loops, Fruity like a Loops. demo version. And so like with Fruity Loops, the demo version, like 
if you started a song, you could not save the project. So you had to finish the song, export it, and then open cause, and open up a new project, and that was gone. Wow. So like you'd make a song, and like you'd, I'd keep my computer on for like two days, <laughs> and then you'd export it, and then that was the demo version. So that's what I was using was Fruity Loops. Fruity Loops. And then I went to Reason, then went to Pro Tools, GarageBand, and then like Ableton. I've been on there since like 2007. Ableton, Ableton Live. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you 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 talked about Matt Deason and, and Diplo and um, who's been on the show. He's done guest sets. By the way, you can come back and do a guest set I'd whenever you want to. Um, and you guys got a, a project. We were gonna world premiere a song today, uh, but we're not able to, right? I was I'm really sad about this. Uh -huh. We couldn't get the clear the clearance and yeah. for whatever. I don't know that stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> blah 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, Jack, you. The records are so dope, though. Like, I'm, I'm really, we're really proud of this. We've been playing them live. We actually debuted like most of the stuff at Burning Man this year. Uh huh. And yeah, it's just like it just doesn't sound like anything else. And they're really big songs, like, mm -hmm. like to us at least. You know, we love them. But I'm, I'm sad I can't play them today. Is it any truth to? I've been reading that people say you guys were booed at Burning Man. I know that's it. It was a rumor. It was a total rumor. Um, mm -hmm. actually, I was just reading. West posted about it. Think about Burning Man. If you've been to Burning Man, no one boos at Burning Man. Yeah, it's like the most hippie. Everyone's happy and having the best time. Like you've never seen anybody booing. That would they would get they would get booed if they were booing. You know, like yeah. Yeah. it's not like that at Burning Man. But this is what happened. So we played this like we played like eight sets the whole week. We played yeah. like a ton of sets together. We played everything. We played like reggae sets. We played techno sets. We played like crazy or or, or you know Jack U style where we just go all out and play like bangers. And then you know there's this you know. Um, you know, very famous art car called Robot Heart, where yeah. they just like do deep techno and house. And so I was doing a set over there, and Wes showed up, and I actually played Toto Africa, and that's like it's a little slower. That was like my last song, just yeah. for fun. And the crowd was like loving it, and then Wes came up and just dropped "Turn Down for What," uh -huh. and the crowd like went crazy. They loved it, and like everyone like was laughing because you would never hear that record on that stage because it's so just techno. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and nobody booed. Like everyone was like having the dopest time. And then, and then all of a sudden, like the next the next week, you see all these, you know, rumors of being booed off stage. Yeah, you know, it's funny. People got to make headlines to yeah, make money, exactly. right? They right? need those clicks, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. need those views, huh? Uh, yeah. You and you and Wes uh, Diplo got together and did a song called "Dirty Vibe" off this uh, album, and you got some guests on that as well, right? Yeah, CL and G Dragon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shout out! Actually, it was with CL last night. That was crazy. Last night at that marquee was like CL was there, Fat Man Scoop was there. Fat Man, ha Scoop, half of the man. half of the the recess crew. But um, yeah, this record was really special because we did this in Korea, uh -huh. um, and you know I've been fans of them for a long time, been trying to get with them for for years, and G Dragon as well. And so um, this one is just this is the weirdest, craziest record ever. I think on on the album. This is called Dirty Vibe off the Recess album. Skrillex is here. 888-742-3345. Dirty vibe. <laughs> Dirty vibe. There it is. Skrillex is here, man. That's off the album Recess. Um, we're gonna take a few of your calls. 888-742-3345. Trace, I know you've been dying to talk to him. Yes, Skrill. I don't know how you're gonna feel about this, but just man, drop yo, it. I loved you and Ellie together. I right did. Oh man, gossip yeah. now. <laughs> yo, yo, listen. <laughs> Don't kill what made me. you what made you think of that? Well, I was thinking because when you guys broke up, I was like, girl, why the hell did this happen? Because sometimes you just become invested okay, in people's relationships. Yeah, for sure. And I saw you guys at the top of the year, you did um Because. Yeah. Which sounded awesome. And I was like, that's, that's you know that record? Yes. And I thought it was interesting you know that? that you that's guys cool. Well, one of that my was, friends was like, the fader. And that was just like we never even released that. I just like did that for fun. We did that for fun. She, I, she just played it on any Mac show and it just kind of got out there. That's yeah, cool. You know that. Yeah. I mean, listen, she's like always going to be one of my closest friends. And um, it was just hard. Like, you know, we started dating at a time where she was off cycles. Like she was writing for a record. So it was a lot easier for her to come out on tour with me. The minute she got on cycle, it was like we look at our schedules and there were gaps, like five month gaps where like we can't even be in the same place because of our tour right. schedule. So it was like impossible. But she's like, She's one of the most talented people I've ever been with in the studio and ever seen live. So that girl's dope. Shout She's out to Ellie. Hey, so after yeah. after y'all y'all decided to go your separate ways, I mean, what was your social life after that? Did you go crazy? <laughs> I'm not really I'm the thing is I don't have like too much time for like for that stuff. I'm so I have like fifty deadlines at every moment, you know, yeah, and I'm like so. I'm always working, you know, and like that's the most important thing for me right now. Yo, I love that answer yeah. right there. I mean, you just made yeah. out of a million more female fans by saying that, man. <laughs> um, uh, Skrillex is hanging out. Did you have some more questions? I know that was 
bothering you, Tracy? Yeah. Well, no. I wanted to know, are you dating now? What's like the girls that you're into? Black girls with big butts. Say I'm, word. <laughs> right here. <laughs> We're looking right here. Have there be. <laughs> together we're killing it <laughs> <laughs> no i mean like i said like it's it's just crazy right now and you know finishing this jackie record like me and yeah. wes have this whole ep we're like finishing every day and it's like it's i mean if you look at our schedule it's like we got sway mm -hmm. then we got this another show then i gotta get ready for this other show then i'm in the studio and then like so yeah i'm just kind of i'm just kind of floating right now you know are you when you're in the studio with um diplo the two of you together man uh what is that chemistry like? Are y'all like, is this surreal? It's just crazy. Like, we always, you know, we're always pushing. I mean, on our own ends, we're always trying to innovate and, like, create new sounds and, and push it. And together, it just becomes something so different. I mean, Diplo is one of the most innovative. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's. I think he's the most innovative producer in electronic music, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. that's doing stuff, you know. Um, and I feel like, I mean, when we get together, we just there's no boundaries, no limits, and we just make whatever we want to make. You know, it, yeah. Is there a song off this project that you just? I mean, I'm sure the whole entire project you can't wait for the world to hear. But is there that one song that you're like, oh my gosh, wait till they hear this one? I mean, there's two records that are awesome. I mean, there's one. I mean, I mean, th all the records are awesome. But, but like the ones that are like more finished and done. This is one record we did with um, Luna George. Actually, there's two versions. There's one for her album. And there's one for for Jack U. And that one's called To You. And that's an amazing song. Mm -hmm. And there's another record we did with Kaiza. Yeah. Um, who has that hideaway single? And that was dope too because we were in Ibiza and we like went to go see the Kaiser show. Kaiser was opening up for like Axwell or something at a Schwire, one of those oh. clubs. And we saw her live and she killed it, like just sang like perfect. And so we took her back to uh, our hotel where we were staying and recorded that record like in, you know, in, the, in our hotel room. Educate me a little bit, Skrillex. All right, so it seems to me in my ear, and going back to the call of that, sometimes when you get in the studio and all these electronics, and, like, you can sample and you can make people sound hot. So could you, like, do me a favor and, like, you could take Sway and put him in the studio and make him, like, a big EDM <laughs> artist and get us some money? <laughs> nah, could, you do, could you produce Sway? Like, you gonna, you're going to be his booking agent? <laughs> no, yeah. I'm a, I want to be on the record. I'm greedy. Because okay, okay. yeah, I, I, I have the hook. It's like me and Wanda was talking. You could go. Sorry. We should do a freestyle next time. I'll bring some beats in, and we'll do yeah, a Sway. Sway yeah. so on, on, the, on the top, we'll record it. I'll, I'll get the stems. I'll produce it. I'll bring it back. Next take me week to China, afterward. yo. Take me to China. Come here. I'll be your side boy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we, can do it. we got Harrison uh, from Austin on the line. Say hello to Skrillex. Harrison, how you doing? Yo, yo. What do you do, everyone? Good morning. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, so we heard Sway talking a little bit about uh, how she spent some time in analog studios, and I think part of that time was probably referencing uh, your show with Molly Marl, right? Um, who? 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 Me? Sway with Molly Mall, East West Coast. Oh, uh, Vegas Molly Mall, Molly Mall or Marley Mall? Marley Mall. The old school or the new school? Cool. Old school. Okay, we used to do a simulcast with, with uh, Marley Mall with the Wake Up Show, right. and uh, Marley Mall was broadcasting from the East Coast. We were broadcasting from the West Coast. Um, yeah, but what's your point? What's your question? For well, I'm Skrillex? wondering, you know, for Skrillex, like how much of his uh, influence in this new hip hop direction does? You know, how much of it comes from old school? How much of it comes from that era? How much of it is more recent? How did you get introduced to hip hop? I guess the hip hop I was listening to was like just really random. I was listening to a lot of like, you know, like I mean, I loved N.W.A. growing up, yeah. and then I loved like stuff like you know. Um, even like Mortal Technique, I was really into like like on a total wow. different, yeah. you know, that all that stuff and like, and even some of the backpacky stuff. Yeah, like, and it, like I, I mean, Atmosphere was dope. I toured with Atmosphere in my old band and stuff. Wow. And I was like listening to listen to a lot of stuff. Right? Yeah. I love Tribe Called Quest. Actually, you guys see that Tribe documentary? Yeah, yeah. that was great. So right. dope. I actually <laughs> saw it recently. Michael Rappaport. But just like yeah, I mean, I listen to everything though. You know, like I there's very few genres that I. You know, or there's very few phases in my life where I was only into one genre. Like even when I was like listening to hardcore or punk or playing those bands, I kind of listened to everything. But I mean, hip hop for me, like even like Jedi Mind Tricks or something, I was into wow. like some of the crazier stuff. But it's all cool. It's all you, music. You you were telling me an interesting uh, story because I I was listening um, um, to the coast is clear now. It just made me think then what would, what would happen what would it sound like if Skrillex and Andre 3000 three stacks Ooh. got together Dope. what would that be like and you had a chance to hang out with them right 
yeah, he uh, he watched my show. It was actually crazy. It was one of the craziest stages I've ever seen at Coachella. People watching it was like three stacks. It was a uh, it was a uh, Jay Z and Beyonce and their whole crew, mm-hmm. and then it was um, Edge from U two, the guitar player. Yeah, wow. <laughs> It's like a really surreal moment, but actually hanging out with him afterwards was really cool, really down to earth guy. I've, I've I've kicked it with Big Boy mm-hmm. like a few times. We did some shows together, and like his son was a big fan, so yeah. we like hung out with Big Boy's son. But I never got to meet Andre until Coachella this year, so yeah. I'd love to get in the studio with him. For Ooh, sure, make that happen, man. Yeah. Uh, Squirrel X is hanging out, man. We want to do the game now, or we come back. Let's do it. Let's do the game now. We got a game for you, man. DB came. He he. This is DB. Am I getting quiz now? Yeah, you're gonna yes. get quiz, man. Oh. Uh, and, and tell them what's the premise of the quiz before. All we right. Go. You got the uh, alien emoji on the cover. Yeah, um, you know you got the aliens on the uh, production on the promotional posters yeah. for your tour. So we wanted to know how much you know about UFOs. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. What year did the CIA finally admit that Area 51 does exist? Was it A, 2001, B, 1999, or C, 2013? 99, I'm going to say? Nope. Nope. One? C, last year. 2013. Area 51 being? Being uh, in Nevada where uh, all the... Wait, uh, you're saying so it was only... Wait, it was only last year that the government officially stated that Area 51 exists. Like, yes. it was not even a dot. They wouldn't admit to it until okay, last that's year. Okay, But you got to explain for those who may not know what that is. Area 51, you know, all the UFO classified documents and everything that has, you know, been put out there, you know, as a rumor or, you know, stuff like that. It's a base. It's in Nevada. It's, it's like you can't even get, like, miles from it. There's signs that says, like, you will get shot, basically, if yeah. you <laughs> go near this place. Right. And apparently a UFO crashed in that area. Roswell, yeah. you're thinking of. Oh, that's the wrong one? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. What's the next question? <laughs> <laughs> Two. How many Sci-fi UFO- geek. <laughs> how many UFOs have been tra- tracked entering the Earth's atmosphere? How many? How There's many? No, you know, out of A, B, and C? No, let me just take a wild guess. <laughs> a million. <laughs> None. No, okay. <laughs> okay. That's, that's not a true. Trick question. How do you know that? That's not true. They said it never what popped it? up on the radar. <laughs> Nothing on record. That's Nothing not true, record. though. Nothing, Nothing on record that we know of, though. That people see what I'm saying? To. See, it's a conspiracy you, theory. That's bro. different, though. Yeah. If you it's my said, quiz, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. How many Americans believe in alien abduction? A, one in five. B, two in five. Or C, less than one in five. I would say one in five. You're correct. Yay! Yes. And who knows his sci-fi? <laughs> All right. Number four. <laughs> to avoid the confusion and speculative associations that have become attached to UFOs, some investigators prefer to use the new term UAP, which stands for Upper Atmosphere Projectile, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or C, Unidentifiable, unidentifiable and Pretty. Two. You're right. C or B. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was easy. You know that one? Okay. Good. All right. The next one's pretty easy, too. Steven Spielberg based his character on an imaginary friend after his parents divorced in 1960. Which character was it? Um, what? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Steven? <laughs> <laughs> Director Steven Spielberg yeah. based this character on an imaginary friend e. after his... Yes. There it is. All right. <laughs> Ah, good, man. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, do you think he passed the test, DB? He's cool. Screw. I got like what <laughs> percentage did I get on that? About a thirty. About a th- 30 nah, I was a little. I'd high. say more 40. 50. 40. 40. 40. 40. 45. Oh, you passed the class. Okay, there it is, man. <laughs> Yo, Skrillex, man. Um, first of all, congratulations on your continued Absolutely. success. Absolutely. I Thank truly you. believe you are. We're looking at the future right now in the present with uh, with your approach to making music. And, and how it's impacted people's lives in a positive way. And just bringing all of these um, artists and these sounds and uh, this energy together in such a unique unique way, I think is a part of pushing culture forward. So uh, I appreciate you, homie. Oh, thank you, man. Absolutely, man. Thank yeah. you. Continue success. You got to come back and do a set for us. I'd love to. And then the, um, the tour kicks off the September fall tour. 26. September 26th. Okay, Skrillex looked at us for the answer. He's like, Wait, what, when does it? Right, you guys know, right? All right, and, and Jack, you, uh, when, when, when will the project be fully released? We're going to announce that very soon. Oh, okay. we're finishing some stuff. Like I said, I wish I could play this for you guys, but next time. You can, sure. man. Go against the rules, man. I can't. I don't want to get in trouble. Break the Kevin law. Kevin Gensatsu will kill me if I play this. A little, what about a little bit? Like six seconds, dude. I got, we actually have this, we have a live version we're streaming on YouTube right now that's like, it's like a very older live version. I don't know if you can even play that. Can we play that? Okay. Our song on YouTube is on SoundCloud. Oh, okay. Let's see what happens. If Wonder could pull that up real quick. And then while he's pulling that up, man, I, you got a lot of 
questions real here, real quick. Pink is in San Jose. Go ahead, Pink. What's your question? Hey, what's up, Dwayne? What's, what's up, up Pink? Hello. Hey. Um, How's San Diego? Is, How's the weather over there? It's beautiful. San, it's I think San Diego has the most. Bay Area weather. Well, she's in San Jose. Oh, she's San Jose. Bay, yeah, okay, yeah. My, my bad. Bay Area, though. Awesome. Yeah, Bay Area. Did you, did yeah, so, you, Pink, did you know he was from the Bay Area? Actually, did not know that, and I love him more now. <laughs> what part of the Bay? I lived in SF for ten years. I went, I went, I went to um, West Portal Elementary School when I was really young. Oh, and way back. Yeah, way back when. Cool. No <laughs> wonder you're so frustrated. So what's going on? What's, what's going your, on with what's you? What's your question? All right, so check in. My question is like, where do you see EDM going now? I mean, I'm pretty sure you get that a lot, but like, do you see it? Dumbing down, like BPM slowing down, or do you, you know, because it's getting more incorporated with the hip hop, but do you totally. see more of a hip hop coming yeah. in? Or? I mean, the cool thing, the, the cool thing about it, that's a really great question. Like, and that's, I think, like, a lot of the roots of where I come from, like, like early dubstep was urban music in the UK and like drum and bass, and that's evolved into like trap, and that's evolved into like, like Jack U and, and new, new sounds that are incorporating all those things. And a lot of it's slowing down, a lot of it's getting faster, but I just think in general, you know, there's like the big room EDM stuff you see, like the all, all the Dutch stuff, like yeah. Hardwell, you know, a lot of the four on the floor, mm -hmm. 128 stuff, and then a lot of stuff we do is slowed down, you know? Like yeah. all those mustard beats, you know? Like, like turn down for what is like a crazy turned up mustard beat, you know, 100 BPM. So a lot of that stuff is coming coming together for sure. All right. Hey, Pink, thanks for your call. That makes you a citizen. Let's wait in the Pink. 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 All right. Uh, man, you live tonight on Electric Area, right, at 9 p.m. Eastern. Is that what time it is? Yep, 9 p.m. Eastern. Wait, my new manager. Yeah, man, I got you, dude. Don't worry, man. Uh, man, thanks again, man. You guys pick up the Recess Project as well, man. Some really great music on it. It's never the same thing twice. That's what I like about you and what you do. Uh, tell tell Diplo I said what up. That's the homie. I will. All right. And uh, Skrillex, man. Thank you, hey. brother. That was great, man. Thank you guys so much. Absolutely, man. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.